So, a little bit about me. I love words. I always have. Um, I think they're fun. I like. I enjoy playing with them. And my background is like I started in customer support on the phone, and I took care of our customers. And then moved on to writing knowledge base articles. You know, they need that help, that instruction. And then moved into writing product copy, and that's when I got into UX writing and now UX design. And so let's move on. <laughs> okay, so microcopy. So the, these are the words that make up a website. Like it's in a UI, it's stuff that helps users accomplish a task. Um, these are like button labels and CTAs, error messages, success messages, tooltips, um, form labels, onboarding, like all those little bits of words. Um, it's less of the long form content and more of short strings of words to help users accomplish a task. Um, so now, think of microcopy as the conversation between the company, or the website, and the user. So that back and forth. And the microcopy is our side of the conversation. Um, all right, let's go on. So, let's talk about some borked conversations. This is my word. Um, so, this is how I like to describe conversations that just, they did not go well. And it's usually because words are an afterthought. You know, the design comes first, the development comes first, just like the idea, like all the, you know, we want to do this. And so then it gets designed, developed, and then at the end the developer's like, oh, I have this error message, I'm just gonna write whatever, you know. They, they need to, you know, provide that message for the user, but there's no time to ask a writer or care to ask a writer to clean up the words. Um, so now, imagine this exchange happening with two people sitting across from each other. And this is where the conversations start to feel weird. <laughs> You've clearly failed to log in. Let me lecture you. And then a whole long lecture of all the things you've done wrong since third grade. And then, this red boy ad robot, he made you think you crashed the internet because you forgot to check the terms of service box. Like, oh, that's good. <laughs> you gotta love it. So let's just have a real conversation with our users. But first, let's go over some fundamentals. Okay, the three principles of UX writing. Clear, concise, and useful. Clear, you know, Take out the jargon, choose the simpler word, or find a word that is more commonly used, like a simpler way to say it. Um, offer context so they know what you're talking about. Be consistent with the names and labels. Like, this is not the time for a thesaurus and choosing flowery, flowy words. Like, no, just, if you're going to call it my account, call it my account every single time you refer to it. Um, and then use plain language, I may have already said that. Concise, this is my favorite. I think work, cutting words is a very fun game. And how you do it is by choosing a more precise word. Um, so if you've got a sentence that has like three words that are capturing that idea, this is when you do grab a thesaurus and look for one word that captures that whole idea. And it can be done um, with concise also, pick the most important topic, the most important con content that you want your user to know, put that first, and then edit ruthlessly afterwards because it's less important information. You need to be concise because in, in microcopy, UI copy, there's, you don't have a lot of room. So you need your users to have the most important information first. And every word should earn its place. That's where editing comes into play. Um, useful. 
So with microcopy, it has a job. You, you want the text to help people get to where they want to go, help them achieve their goal, and help them achieve it quickly. You don't want the words to get in, in the way because they don't want to read a ton to understand what their next action is. Um, so one way you can check for this is asking yourself, is this information relevant right now? Does it help the user get where they're supposed to go next? So with these three principles, they're a good first step, but in order to have that good conversation, you need to know your audience. And this is where, this is where you can really like start to customize what you're saying and the word you're choosing and whether like the humor you choose to use, whether it will actually resonate with your audience or whether they'll be stumped as to what that joke even meant. Um, so your audience, th these are users that are interacting with your website. Like why are they coming to you? Who are they? What are they interested in? What goal are they trying to accomplish with like your product, your website? Like why are they there? Um, so and along with this, like knowing your audience mean, like will also help you choose familiar words and phrasing that they understand and connect with. Let's see. Voice. Sounds fun. So Voice, this is the personality of the brand. And when you're, like every single product and brand has a personality. And the personality is, like the words, when users are reading them, they kind of hear that voice in their head and it personifies the brand to them. And that's what voice is, it's that personality. Um, one thing to keep in mind with personality is that it doesn't really change much day to day. So as a user is like going through your website or your app, it should, the personality should feel consistent wherever they're at. So they should be able to recognize the personality. Um, if you want to have a personable personality and actually have like a good conversation, I highly recommend using contractions and an active voice because that's how we talk. We use contractions, we don't say, you cannot accomplish this thing, like, we don't. We say, you can't, or, I mean, you guys you know what contractions are, like, you use them, right? <laughs> so we're not, we're not robots, we're human. Tone, tone depends on context, and it change, changes depending on your context. This is, like, when you're talking with your friend and you know that you're delivering a bad news, you soften your tone, and you change your approach for how to deliver that. Um, same with if you're delivering happy news. You, you act more excited, you use more cheerful words. This is, this is similar with um, microcopy, like with an error message. Your user is, they're feeling confused, they're feeling stressed, angry, and so your tone, you wanna be gentle and serious and reassuring because you wanna meet them where they're at. With a tooltip, which is you know that helpful text that like you know gives you that information you need, at that state, like a user is like inquisitive, unsure, but they're interested. They want more information, and so you want to be straightforward and helpful. Just give them the information quick, right to the point. With a product description like marketing, this is when your user is like hopeful, they're curious, they're like investigating, trying to find a solution. So this is when you want to be informative, helpful, and enticing. That's how you would adjust your tone. Okay, user flow, content first design. I'm pretty passionate about content first design because of the impact it has on the conversation and how it, how it like the exchange feels. Um, because as a user progresses through a task flow, um, I mean, the conversation needs to flow from the, that in the you know, first interaction to the next and to the next, and it needs to sound natural all the way through. Um, when, I've seen this many times, when a design has come first, <laughs> when I've tried to write words, it feels like putting toothpaste back in the tube 
and the conversation that, that happens feels disjointed and like, a, like you're talking to a crazy person because it's out of order and it doesn't feel natural. But when you put content first design, or like content first and actually like imagine like the exchange happening between two people, you can create this more natural flow that, that like has a good conversation and the user just like can just carry through the, the task and the flow and accomplish their goal faster and just in a more comfortable natural way. They don't have to pause and think or be like, wait, what? I don't, I don't understand. You don't have those type of pauses when you, know, you put the content first and you like map out your user flows in a logical way before you even start designs. Um, let's see. So this is what a conversation can look at. Like, set up your site. What's the name of your site? And then, you know, customer types it in. Great. What username would you like to use? You type it in. And then now set your password and then the helpful text. And it's just that back and forth of that sounds friendly, conversational, and you know, it's that back and forth. Um, and to test whether the words that you've chosen for your side of the conversation, whether they, they, they would sound good, um, read them out loud. Because if they sound awkward or robotic, it's going to read awkward and robotic to the user in their mind. So read it out loud and then adjust the words until when you read it out loud, it sounds natural, flows well, and you're, you're not stumbling over words. Also, it really helps to read it out loud to another person or have them read it and see what their response is. But like, just test the words on other people. It works. Every writer needs an editor. And, okay. So, how to get better at this, like how to improve, whatever. Pay attention to the words and phrases in websites that you like and apps, like those interactions that you liked, you felt like connected with and you felt like flowed well, make note of them, write them down and just study the words and the phrases. Um, next, practice simplifying complex ideas because that is, that is something we do a lot in conversations w for each other. Um, we explain things, we simplify, we, we help others understand by simplifying the idea, whereas I've noticed in websites and we don't do that for each other. We tend to like, you know, lots of jargon, lots of technical terms. The developer probably wrote it. Um, but what we can do for each other, simplify those complex ideas. And one way I like to practice this is first, like take something that you're really familiar with and then simplify it and try to get it a good description in 140 characters or less. That you could hand it off to someone else and they would understand that, just the basic idea of what that idea is. It's a good way to do it. Um, and then map out existing user flows. Like this is, like when you sign up for a new account for anything, just map out the flow, map out their onboarding, and then rewrite it. Or rewrite it and reorder it. Like just try and make the conversation better and improve upon um, that user flow that you just experienced from whatever website. And it's just a good way to practice, you know, those, the conversation and reordering user flows into a more logical order of things. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, actually, sometimes I will write up, write out a conversation with them and I'll have them be the customer and I'll be the company and we'll write it out. It works similar to storyboards, but mm -hmm. sticky notes help really well for being able to re rearrange quickly. So yeah, it's a good way to do it. Okay, in conclusion. We can just talk human until the zombie apocalypse strikes. Well, we know what happens. Any questions? Concerns?
Hi. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. It doesn't, so I actually, I have some compassion for the developers that are being forced to write this, these messaging, like the error messages at the end, because I mean, that's not their job and it, it comes from poor planning, but they're doing their best and they're, they're at least, you know, finishing the job, but you're right that the error code, come on, <laughs> somewhere else. Ha, I love 404 pages. Okay, 404 pages, like, I feel like those are a fun opportunity to show the brand's personality. And like, you have to understand with, with personality, if you've chosen to have like a more formal approach, then you can't have humor in the 404 pages. But I like having humor there. I do think it is important for 404 pages to um, let, like, give the user a suggestion, like, um, you couldn't find what you were looking for, would you like to go back to the home page? Or just something, some sort of direction on what they can do next, or a suggestion of where they could look to find it, whatever they were looking for. That's my suggestion. Yeah. No, I think they're really entertaining. Okay, so you see like everything that you said. Oh, that's a bad thing. <laughs> mm, yeah, because I, I really like to imagine it being in person. Like some, like realtor websites. There was one I found where like, okay, imagine this. So, you know, you immediately get this, this newsletter pop up it's like, sign up for my newsletter, and you're like, okay, I just want to look for a house. I don't know you. N no thanks. And then, so like, the way I imagine that is you walk into a realtor's office, and then he immediately runs up to you, and he's like, this close to your face, can I be your realtor? And you're like, dude, <laughs> back off, I have, no. And that's how I feel like most of those newsletter pop-ups come across. <laughs> But then like you also get into like with that same realtor website, like, okay, you say no thanks. And you get into the website and it's already showing you listings. You're like, well, I haven't told you what I want. And so I imagine that as the realtor being like, look at all these things I need to sell. Do you want one? You're like, well, no, I actually want a house in this city. So again, no thanks. And so then you get to the, <laughs> The, the search, and you know on those realty websites, they're like, listing type, bedrooms, washing machine, like, they list like every single little detail, and it feels like you're just being peppered with questions, you're just like, okay. And then you move your cursor to click out, and you get another pop-up of like, hey, sign up for my newsletter, can I be a realtor? And you're like, oh my gosh, no. So like that interaction, like imagining it in person just it makes me laugh. So yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Google, I'm just kidding. Actually, I do like Google a lot. Um, okay, resources for what specifically? Um, Yeah, okay, question. Do you need to be collaborative with it or are you doing it on your own? Okay, one I really like is real-time board because, I mean, you can map stuff out real quick, you can get the sticky notes up and, you know, then you can like invite people to join and help you sort it out, that kind of thing. Um, 
I do really like Google Docs for collaboration as well. For user flows, another good one is whimsical for fast like maps, mapping. It's whimsical.co, I believe. That one is free for like a certain number of boards, but um, you can like map really, really fast and then rearrange easily as well. I would say those. Oh, thanks. Yes, absolutely. It doesn't have to be final copy. Like content first design is those content ideas in place. And, and honestly, I feel like the developer should have a role in that. Because they can tell you whether you know, that's possible or not, or you're gonna make it more complicated. Especially, because like, um, if the, the developer comes in and says, you know like, well, yeah, we can do that, but we have to do it this way. It can very quickly change how that conversation comes across because then you have to write more copy to explain the weird little change. But if you bring in a developer in these conversations when you're first like working out the ideas and the, the content, um, you can skip a lot of problems. But with, with the content first design, if you can get those ideas of like what the exchange needs to happen. So like with this example, this one. Um, the ideas were just, okay, we need to ask them the name of their site. That's the information we need. Uh, the other thing is we want to know their username so they can create that password. Um, there was more to this flow. This is an example flow that I wrote, but um, when I wrote it originally, there were quite a few screens, but all, all I did was just get the basic ideas of like what information I'd be asking for, and, and then you know, imagining you know, like what would be coming back from the user. And also by imagining what could be coming back, you can also identify situations where they might return something unexpected, and that will trigger an error, which is still part of the conversation. Like the conversation is ongoing as the whole time they're interacting with your website. But the, the final copy was written at the end when the front end developer was ready to, to put it in. But all the ideas were there so that you know, back end development could you know, get those pieces in place and knew what to expect. And then that gave me time to actually finalize and polish and choose the right words. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> I think chatbots are super interesting. Um, I, I would love to write the responses for a chatbot. It would just be super fun. Um, I do think they definitely have a place. I think they're still, they are still very new. And, and so, I mean, the, the bot has to be programmed to sound natural and to like understand all the different varieties of input they can get. And, and interpret it as, oh, they mean this, so they can return the right answer. Um, I think they can replace like some types of things, but until until like machine learning is like improved and we've got it like more mainstream and like used more, I think until then, chatbots are gonna sound like a bot. Unless you've got a really good developer and writer working on it. <laughs> I don't know. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do think, um, like the Google Assistant and Alexa, um, I have more experience with the Google Assistant because we have one of those at home. I have found it very interesting to see what type of responses are returned and the response she doesn't answer or doesn't know. And I, I feel like the Google Assistant does a pretty decent job of sounding human and natural and conversational. And it's kind of creepy sometimes. But, I don't know. Yeah, I don't have that skill set. My brother does, and I'd be able to get him to. Really? Is that similar to the Alexa skills that you can? I think so. I don't know. I just remember the VFR. I looked at it and I said, it's going to be done. Hmm. All right. I'm doing it. Any other questions? All right. It was fun talking to you guys. <laughs> Have a good one.